Now I'm going to show you how I got from a 3D printed cover all the way to a beautifully aged, metallic, ancient looking belt buckle. The first thing I did was I finished it with acetone vapors. Right now this is pretty rough on the edges. You can see a lot of the texture from the 3D printer. And I want that to be a little smoother, so what I'm going to do is put it into this metal paint can right here with, uh, with a little bit of acetone. The vapors from the acetone will eat just the top of the plastic right off and let it turn into something a little smoother and more finished looking so that then I can sand and paint it a little bit more easily. I put some paper towels into the can and I have poured just a few tablespoons of acetone in there on top uh, so that they'll kind of soak and get up around the edges. Now I have a piece of foil and I'm going to make a little platform for the foil, for the, for the piece out of the foil, supporting all the parts underneath so that it won't fall if it starts to if it gets a little too soft during the acetone toning, the, the whole thing will collapse. So I'm folding this aluminum foil so it'll support underneath. And also just making sure that it won't touch the paper towel with the acetone. We don't want it to touch the acetone directly at all. I'm going to close that up, and I'm going to give it about five hours, uh, maybe four hours, just depending on how thick the piece is. This particular piece, I think four or five hours is going to do it. I'm not going to put this in the sun or put it any place that will uh, get warm. I want to just let it steep <laughs> in its own vapors for a few hours until the surface gets, gets finished. Okay, I've got it out of its acetone spa. And as you can see, it looks pretty shiny. It looks really pretty plasticky, but it is a much smoother finish, a little bit nicer. Uh, this has actually been sitting for a while. Uh, when it first came out of the acetone, it was pretty soft, and I was able to kind of smush it around a little bit. I actually put it onto the case and let it firm up a little bit while it was in place so that the shape would be absolutely perfect. Now that it's hardened up, I'm going to sand it down a little bit and then get to primering it and painting it. I have some 100 grit sandpaper here and also some 220. And I'm going to start with the 100 grit just to get most of the shiny edges off and see if I can smooth down any of the, the bits that aren't, aren't quite what I want. starting to look pretty good, but it still looks a little too neat and tidy to me. So I'm going to actually take a couple tools and play with making some gouges. So it looks like maybe it got hit by a, a sword in some ancient battle a few times and uh, really roughed up. Looks like it's been dropped. It looks like it's been forgotten a million times. I want it to look ancient. This is starting to look pretty different from our original print right here. You can see the texture is starting to come through. A lot of it might get lost when we do the painting, but it's starting to look pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and primer it. I'm using a paint-on primer rather than a spray primer. The main reason is my device has all these wonderful little cracks in the plastic that will show the light right through when we have the, uh, the artifact turned on. 
it comes through right through all these little cracks right here which just looks amazing in the dark I don't want to cover that up so if I were to use a spray primer it would get into all the cracks and crevices instead I'm just gonna brush some primer on the top try to keep those crevices as paint free as possible so that more of the light will shine through and I'm just gonna dab it on here with a foam brush right on the top. The paint really will not stick to the ABS without the primer. Primer is a very important step. If you skip this, then as you can see my original design, I didn't even take it to any fairs or festivals or anything like that. You can see uh, I did not primer this one and it's already chipping off after just a couple of days of holding it in my house. So I'm definitely going to make sure that on this round I'm going to put a nice couple of coats of primer on here, let it dry completely before I move on to the next step. I have a big variety of metallic paints that I just got at the craft store. Uh, I've got some golds and silvers and some bronzes and a couple of darker gunmetal gray and black kind of colors. So I'm just going to start layering these things on. I want a real good solid base color in sort of a dark brown because I'm going for a bronze finish. So I'm going to start with that. Now I've got a couple coats of the base coat dry, so the next thing I'm going to use is some Rub and Buff, which is a gold sort of oil-based paint. It's going to give it a really deep, nice metallic sheen. Now this looks pretty cool and metallic. I'm being careful not to get it into the grooves. Uh, so that the light will continue to show up when I uh, when I place it on top of the, the LEDs. I'm going to let that dry and maybe give it uh, another little coat if there's any place that looks thin. And now that we've got this all nice and shiny, it's time to make it look really filthy and dirty <laughs> and worn. To do that, I'm going to start with some acrylic paints. I have some real dark uh, metallics. I have a gunmetal gray right here and here's a satin sequin metallic black and I'm going to pull down some of the low lights with. The way I'm going to do this is just get a tiniest bit of paint on my brush. Really it's just a, a very dry brush. I'm going to wipe most of it off on the, on the paper here. And then I'm just going to start to come through and with my, my roughed up brush I'm going to just kind of start to stroke on the edges and and give some low lights in the in the deeper places here. Now to get inspiration for this part, I uh, just had my eyes open. I was walking around and I went to the gym and I saw a beautiful rusty old weight at the gym holding up, I think it was holding the door open. So I, I looked at it real close and, and you can see the, the ancient rust spots. It's just this thing is beautiful. Uh, and all the different tones and shades that you can see inside of the rusty rusty weight. So. I'm using that as inspiration to, to try and make this thing look like it's been lying around a, for, for centuries as well. I'm starting to get some, some fun dimension on here. So as you see, I'm going to turn my other light on back here. There we go. Uh, I start to see that it, it starts to look a little bit more three-dimensional than it actually is even, and uh, giving me a little bit of, of color depth and, and tone here. 
Then once I've got kind of some low lights on there, I'm going to go back with the silver. I have a metallic silver right here, and I'm going to add some little silver highlights in there as well. It looks like it got rubbed up against another piece of metal at some point in the past. Now the brush works okay for this, but I like to also use the sponge and kind of go back and forth. It gives me a nice sort of mottled, mixed look. Still being careful not to get too much in the grooves. And once I've got a whole bunch of these tonal highlights on every which way, I want to take some of these gold areas and bring them back up again. And that's the cool thing about the rub and buff is I can come back with just my, my, little, my little cloth and start to rub on those areas. And it really starts to pick up a nice little shiny sheen, sort of like uh, it looked on the very, very top of those, those rusty old belt buckles I was looking at online had, had some nice uh, some nice worn smooth places where they still looked really, really shiny. So that's what I'm kind of going for here. It's just a few spots that, uh, that we can rub on here and, and make them super shiny to, to make a contrast for all the rest of the, the darker worn kind of metal. See that, uh, that one section, a couple of sections that I'm working on are getting pretty nice and shiny. It looks pretty, pretty cool. And I can just keep on working on this and adding highlights and lowlights and highlights and lowlights until it looks the way I want it to look. It's, uh, it's getting pretty, pretty cool looking here.
Let's take a look and put it back on top of its uh, of its little case and, and make sure that the, the light that we are having is still kind of shining through here. Let's see if I can turn off this some of these lights. And it's hard to see on the video, but it looks like a lot of the, the light is still kind of shining through the case right here a little bit so we can... Uh, see and up by the button there's plenty of that too so I think I'm getting pretty happy with it